Well, I don't think there is anything so unusual about it that much, other than Haroldine and uh, was Kathy along? They we went no. out to Jennings Farm in the summertime when they had the, the meetings out there. And I know all that uh, there was never any doubt in my mind. Tell him about what Jenny's watch was, man. I cry about it now, even. <coughs> but I, yeah, Jennings Lodge was a summer camp for the, for the churches. And uh, when the uh, I don't like to do this because I always cry. I just got up and I knew when the time came that I was going and I more or less been pressured into going down that day. That, uh, I knew that I had found the Lord. And it's, I've always Cherish the memory of Jenny Claude. Uh, uh, I, I pressured Mother to go into Jenny Claude that morning. And the old, uh, you know, the old campgrounds had wood floors on them. They were slanted down. And I was so excited, I thought maybe she'd find the Lord that morning. And I looked on the, on the bulletin, and here was Bishop Pretorius. And he was the driest, the dullest man I'd ever heard in my life. And I thought, well, we've lost it today. Mother is never going to find the Lord listening to Bishop Pretorius. And you know, it turned out to be the one that led her to Christ. And she thought he, she had heard the most wonderful message that she ever heard. And I, in my doubt, just sat there and thought, she'll never find it this way. But we praise God that she's been a faithful mother and steadfast through the years. And, and my Good father, grandma. if you could get his testimony, he was saved a short time afterwards from my sister Kathy. Dad was 40 some odd years old and, and smoked and drank and he walked out and threw his cigarettes in the gutter and handed me his matches and, and he's never smoked or drank since that time and he's been a wonderful father all through the years. So we're just very fortunate. I just think so too. I tell you, I love the Lord. He's a wonderful Savior. Dana, Dana likes family history. Well, uh, my brother, Charles Ray DeBoard, was two years older than I was. and. Uh, he had on the farm a uh, a horse. I don't. It, we called him Bum. He was a beautiful red horse. And when we moved to from Eastern Oregon down here, my well, daddy brought him in the trailer, and we had him on the farm out in Colton. And then when we moved up to work, mom and dad lived now on 82nd. They converted the the garage to a barn uh, for the horse, and he had a half acre out back. And uh, one thing about it, I'd go out, and my brother had sent away to the Berry School of Horsemanship on how to train your horse. And he had him trained. He could shake hands, he could stand up on a barrel, and he could do everything. And my favorite thing was to go out and say, can I ride? And he'd say, sure you can. And I figured there must be something funny the day he let me ride, that he was so willing to let me ride. So he said, go ahead, go ahead, son, yeah. just go ahead. And I went over to get on the horse, and he said, okay, bum. And he just started to pivot a circle. Every time I took a step, he took one round. Round, round, round he went, and I never did get on him. And that was one of the jokes that went on me, because he had trained him not to let anybody on him but him. And so it was, uh, I learned that way, that you couldn't get a free ride. Go. Oh. Well, what was the old bird was uh, your grandfather's uh, saddle horse. Tennessee Walker. She was a walker, and uh, Bum, uh, she'd been up in the hills that summer, and when she came down to be put up for the winter, why, why she was going to have a baby, so she was uh, let loose around the range. One uh, day here she comes, down to the, the creek to the top, and she had this little coat with her. Well, it's all right, she could wait the trip, but when it comes to him waiting the trip, he was having an awful time, so Grandpa went over, and he picked that bum up and carried him out through the water. 
So he came through the water too. And that was cold? Uh-uh. Yeah. And he grew up around that ranch. And as Geraldine said, Charles trained him to do everything. He used to catch me going down the lane there where we live now as he come in on horseback. And he would ride that horse right up against my back right there. And he put his nose right up against my shoulder. Never come any closer, but he pushed me right down the lane. He was trained and he was, he did everything. And he climbed to lay down. And he never would, he would have uh, laid there forever if Charles had uh, been come and laid him up. He'd say, all right, you can get up now. We couldn't keep him after Charles passed away. Eastern Oregon. You want more? Well, you didn't eat this. Oh, no. Back to where he came. Eat that up.